title of the film should be Back to the Future. It's 6.13 in the morning. It's the 28th of February, 2001. An individual called uh, Gary Hart is driving a Land Rover Defender on the motorway, the M62. Uh, he falls asleep at the wheel. He careers down an embankment, uh, 30 metres, lands up on a railway line. This is a Selby Rail disaster. It's a large, catastrophic motor loss. There were 10 deaths. There were 82 uh, injuries. Uh, there were two trains involved, the Newcastle to London intercity, uh, eventually collided with a freight train moving to Immingham, Immingham, and the total loss of that claim was about £30 million. That is a large claim, and we want to talk about the impact here on reinsurers. So a claim here, we'll give you an analysis, is typically broken down between uh, accidental damage, so in the example of the, the train claim there, the value of the train, uh, third-party property damage, so damage to infrastructure and rolling stock in addition. Um, the bodily injury, and there was basic bodily injury uh, in that, and there were obviously some deaths. And the piece that we want to talk about here really is the, uh, the long-tail liability. The second example here shows that actually as a claim gets larger, the future care earning, the bit that uh, Richard mentioned to you, the discounted or the undiscounted part here, is the bit that's going to concern reinsurers. Okay, the key question here is, how much larger will large bodily injury claims get? Well, to some extent, that depends on uh, the nature of the business that is being written, um, the way that the uh, bodily injury or the injury actually manifests through the claim schedule, and to some extent, the level of reinsurance that's purchased by the insurance company. The example here, we've actually broken down uh, claims by uh, age group, so the age of the claimant, broken that down into uh, the future costs, so future care, future loss of earnings, uh, other heads of damage, and then the lump sum element. And it's clear from this that certainly from a younger age group, we mentioned a young infant, but let's use the younger age group here, future care is going to be the significant part of a claim future earnings at a later date, um, but not to any great extent uh, until uh, we, we look at some awards in a moment. A 65-year-old, though, uh, future care is going to be the key part of uh, that claim. And somewhere there in between there, you can see that the future earnings piece actually is quite important between the, the 30 and 60-year-old age group. For reinsurers, the impact, as much as the insurer, both is on the reserves that they hold on their book, because this isn't uh, a step change that losses that happen prior to the discount rate change are assessed on one basis, and claims that start from the 20th of J uh, January at a different basis. So an insurer and a reinsurer is holding reserves on their book that will need to increase, as well as uh, new losses will actually impact uh, the profitability of uh, the business that they've written. So the change in the value, and I think Richard touched on that earlier, again, we've looked at here in terms of the, the age band. Certainly, um, a younger claimant, a claimant that's going to live for a long period of time, obviously with an impaired, uh, or, or not necessarily, but may have an impaired life expectancy, is going to have that future cost of care and the future loss of earnings. So a younger claimant, a claimant that might be involved, if you like, in um, a young driver portfolio, Typically, we see much larger claims from those younger portfolios. You can see that the uplift that's going to be required or the uplift to that claim is going to be quite significant. When we look at claim size, again, we covered the point earlier. Um, there's less of an impact at the lower level, claims at the half a million level. But as you move up through those larger claims, obviously the future care, the discounted future care or the discount on the, uh, the earnings are much more significant. Are there any actually uh, positives from this? Well, for a reinsurer, um, certainly uh, an element of their cost that will need to be passed on to the insurer and ultimately on to the uh, policyholder, there's going to be a original rate increase. Rate increase is going to be needed to pay for that ad additional reinsurance cost. So a higher, um, higher premium is actually going to mean that reinsurers get some benefit and we touched on briefly the use of periodic payments, so a continued or regular payment. There are two ways in which 
a claimant can be compensated lump sum and a PPO, a periodic payment, the propensity for PPOs to, to actually be awarded is likely to reduce. That actually is a, an important part of a reinsurer's calculation. Reinsurers are quite averse to uh, periodic payment orders. There's the longevity risk that's attached to that. Therefore, we're likely to see less PPO, and in this case, uh, more lump sum. That actually will probably reduce the cost of reinsurance. Finally, really, and, and as Richard mentioned, here is a schedule for, well, this would be a, a, a young claimant. Uh, general damages over the various discount rates stays flat, 350,000 here. But if you look straight at the total costs at the bottom, what you're seeing here is that the 2.5% discount rate, this was claim was pleaded at 10 million. If the discount rate had moved to 1%, it would become a 14 million claim. But at the negative discount rate, it becomes a 27 million claim. So back again to that Selby effect, multiple claimants, the deaths and the injuries, we do now have single bodily injury claims can reach this sort of magnitude.